this new music I've been writing. It's been so cool getting to share. It was so cool to get to write this new music. It was, uh, I mean, th these last 10 years have been quite a journey. Ever since first, well, when I was being a 16 year old, going and deciding to go and audition for this reality TV show. <laughs> reality TV show called American Idol, and, um, you know, I, I almost, I wasn't sure whether I should go or not and do that. I had just gotten my first job right before all of this happened, and I, I wasn't sure whether to go because I had, if I were to go, I'd asked about, you know, my hours and, like, taking some time off, and if I were to go audition for American Idol, I w I'd have to quit my job. They wouldn't let me miss the amount I needed to miss to go down and audition. And so I was like, man, should I go? I don't know if I should. <laughs> man, that's a lot. I just got this job. I finally found something to do with myself. And um, it, it was a really hard decision. Well, well thank you. It, it, was, uh, it was a hard decision to make at the time, though, because I couldn't see what was going to happen next. But um, something that my parents had always taught me to do was to, to it, the, growing up in a religious home, they taught me how to, to be prayerful and mindful about things and to listen for a still small voice and uh, let that guide you. Now it could be your heart, it could be your conscience, or your Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> it could be a lot of things that you may know it as, but my parents would call it the still small voice. And um, so when I decided to go, and, uh, I, I said a prayer there in my bedroom when I was 16 years old, and I just said, you know what? I feel stupid asking and praying if I should go and audition for a reality TV show or not. <laughs> but for some reason, I feel like this is coming from you. And um, yeah. I'm not sh sure why, but I, I, I just want to see if this is really some a sacrifice worth making. Should I really should I really quit my job for this? I'm having a really hard time with that. And um, I really got this sure answer. It was really peaceful, kind of like how my parents told me. It was still when it was small. And um, it was just clear. It was like, I need to go and audition. There's something I need to learn. That's all I knew. So I, I went. And man, well, I definitely learned a lot, I'll tell you that. Uh, and then suddenly having millions of people watching you every week, and people following you, voting for you, listening, it was just amazing. It was also pretty overwhelming. I was always a shy person, a timid, I didn't like attention. And I had to get over that pretty quick. <laughs> but um, from that, going when after that, becoming a recording artist, going on tour, releasing it, singles and albums, having a fan base. It just was blowing my mind. Showing the stage suddenly at these events where there's Katy Perry and there's Lady Gaga and there's Kanye West. And then, and then suddenly you're getting a knock at the door and it's Bruce Springsteen. Oh, okay, hi, Bruce Springsteen. He's saying, hey, is it right if my daughters come to meet you? Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> What is going on right now? It was just so, it was just blowing my mind day after day. And people were saying, you must be having the time of your life. You must be on cloud nine right now. You must be the happiest ever you've ever been. Look at those people. They love you. They're following you. They're singing along to your songs. They're saying, I love you and all these things. And I was like, uh. And when they say, you must be the happiest you've ever been. So, so many people want to be where you are. I was trying to convince myself that they were right. Like, yeah, I, I guess I'm supposed to feel that way. But for some reason, I was always missing something. It was amazing. And it, it was exciting. But for some reason, when you become dependent on all of that, you always feel like you're out of, you're, something's, at a loss. There's a hole in your heart almost. And I learned quickly that how popular you are and how well liked you are and how many followers you have isn't going to make you feel any more worthy, any more secure about yourself. And, and I was even getting depressed. 
And I saw some of my peers that I was alongside with in the entertainment industry that I was now around. They were feeling the same way I was. But they were trying to convince themselves too that they were happy too. But then that hole, that emptiness you feel, so they turned to drugs, to alcohol, to bringing girls back to after the shows, wherever they were. Trying to satisfy that feeling that they weren't feeling. And um, I, I was pretty, I wasn't sure what to do, to be honest. Because what everyone was telling me to do wasn't working. So um, a few years go by and I decided to turn the spotlight down. And I decided to follow that still small voice that I'd always learned. And I, I took a break from my career for a couple of years and I became a missionary for my church in South America. <laughs> It, it changed my life. It, it gave me perspective. And a lot of people said, what? Are you an idiot? Do you realize how hard it is to get where you are? The position that you're in, it is so hard to get there. So many people try to get there. And it takes momentum. And it takes constantly putting yourself out there. You barely have time for a week off. You think you can take two years off? You could basically say, excuse me, so you could basically say, Goodbye to all the work you've done. It'll all go to waste. And all the work that we've done to support you will go to waste too. Think about it. You say you're going to serve God. Who gave you that position you're in in the first place? Wasn't that God? Don't you think he wants you to be where you are? Maybe that's your mission. And I was like, oh, well, that's a good point. Man, man, I know I should admit, maybe I sh shouldn't be doing this and stuff. And even my, even my family, they're like, what? you know, David, okay now, that's a little extreme. <laughs> but uh, something, I, I, there was a time, okay, this is longer, I don't know why I'm talking so much here. <laughs> Washington. I, I, I know I talk, but I'm telling more of the story than I usually do. I, okay, I promise I'm getting to more music here. <laughs> but um, basically, I knelt down my hotel room in New York one night and I just said, you know what? I'm not sure what to do. I'm at a loss. I feel like this is calling me to go and do this. It's something I've actually always wanted to do ever since I was little, be a missionary. But life took another course, but I still feel like I need to do it. What do I do? I feel like that guidance is coming again, that still small voice. But I was confused because there's so many voices now telling me what I should be doing, how to be happy, how to be successful, how to really move ahead. And that voice came again. After a long time of being stressed out and confused and getting all these opinions, and this voice came in, in that hotel room and it said, David, I know who you are, just like I knew who you were back then when you were 16 year old. And, you know, you trusted me then. Do you trust me now? And that was a hard decision. And I decided to say, you know what? Yes, I trust you. And I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know what's going to happen to me when I get back. You know, I was, I'm not good at doing anything else. I'm not good at math or science or <laughs> sports. Music was all that really I knew how to do growing up. And I was like, man, I've worked so hard to get to where I was. I don't know what I'm going to come back to, but I'm, I'm going to trust you. It's worked out so far. And um, so this is what this next song is about. About trust and that whole experience. And it's called, I'm Ready. I can't. 
But if I 